and that's the answer for the question in my opinion uh, the first most important thing is that uh, show jumping horses especially cold blood horses or even warm blood horses not uh, arabian horses or anglo arabians or thoroughbreds and so on usually when they have more energy the way they show you that energy is not going to be as light as an arabian horse or a hot blood horse so they might actually buck in their place in a very slow way with a kick so his way of showing his energy is just by kicking in a normal way that's why a lot of show jumping horses even in high competition in europe and america and so on do the same exact move so it's not something new in my opinion a lot of horses do it especially in show jumping they don't gallop the horse a lot every sing, uh, single thing they do is inside a closed area or arena in show jumping so the horse has a lot of energy and the only way to express that energy or uh, let's say take it out or take it off is by bucking but his way of bucking is heavy compared to arabian horses an arabian horse in the same exact situation usually not always but usually uh, tries to uh, buck and after bucking he rears up both changes the direction and so on so he uses the movement of his body more just more than just kicking it's not just power it's about uh, flexibility and lightness and uh, speed and so on so it's something that most horses will do but most show jumping horses do in that certain way which is about using power more than using let's say skills and uh, speed and so on now that's the first uh, let's say expected reason it's just energy a lot of horses do it the second uh, and, uh, reason in my opinion and it's more important is the spurs and the whip most show jumping horses or most horses in general will not actually jump unless you force them to jump and when i say force i don't mean that you force them in the wrong way you can force them in the right way or wrong way but i mean in their nature horses don't jump unless they really have to you don't see a, a young uh, foal or filly or a colt uh, in a, let's say the desert or in the wilderness alone without a rider uh, heading to a ditch and jumping it by himself but imagine that you chase after him with a helicopter or a car or whatever and he heads towards a tree or a ditch or whatever so he has to jump to run away from you so horses can jump if they had to so to make the horse jump usually you make him hate what's behind him through this purse and the whip and so on in a correct way or a wrong way so he will have to jump which is something he can do in his nature when he has to do it when you give him a reason to do it and usually that reason is done with the whip and with the spurs so when you use the spurs or the whip especially in the beginning of the race or the course when he sees the uh, fences in front of him the horse remembers what you do when you train him in the uh, stable in the paddocks in the arena and so on you use the spurs you use the whip to force the horse to jump the fences when he sees the fences and remembers the pressure of the spurs or the pressure of the whip of course the horse will try to think about reacting in the same way he reacted in the arena when you were training him so it's a normal reaction for the horse when he expects to be touched with the spurs from the right uh, side or the left side or the whip itself that's why even in flat racing with jockeys when the, uh, the horse heads to the final let's say for 100 meters or 300 meters most horses try to move the ears back and try to slow the speed because they are expecting the jockey to whip them with the whip the jockey will just change the position of the whip being prepared to whip the horse so the, uh, the horse will do the complete opposite and move his ears behind and tries to slow down and do the complete opposite of what you want that's why a lot of smart jockeys do the opposite instead of whipping the horse they change the position of the whip to uh, make the horse think that they will not whip him and they use the rein instead of the whip and he will not actually move the ears back and he will not slow down the same goes for show jumping you can actually uh, instead of using the spurs try to move your legs outside instead of touching him with the spurs and, and instead of uh, you using the whip uh, or uh, let's say directing the, or pointing the whip at him at his shoulder or at his uh, hindquarters you move away so you cannot uh, uh, you don't allow the horse to see the whip itself or the stick itself so he will forget about the whip and the uh, spurs and will not react by bucking or uh, kicking with the right leg or the left leg so if it's the energy it's a normal thing an expected thing that happens with most horses even at high level competitions in show jumping if it's a reaction to the whip or the spurs you can actually do a move with the spurs or the uh, uh, whip uh, especially in the course while uh, you are competing with the horse or on the horse to make him think that you're not going to use it anyway so he will kick less or he will react less now if we want to talk about the right reaction 
that you want to do, uh, let's say, on the long term, you can't do it in the competition because you want to ride the horse in a correct way. If uh, the horse is being led by someone else other than you in the stable, other people ride the horse, then you ride the horse. The mistakes in the horse are not just on you. The ones who uh, brush the horse, the ones who wash the horse, the ones who train the horse other than you. All of that is involved in the mistakes you face with the horse. So the horse, in a common, general way, needs to be retrained or rebroken or restarted or whatever. Of course, you're not going to do that with a competition horse. You don't have enough time to do that. You just want to do something while competing in him or on him in a competition. So uh, direction is everything. When the horse kicks to the right side, usually he moves the leg. Uh, sorry, he moves the neck to the left side. If the hind quarters move right while bucking and kicking, the shoulder and the neck will move left and the opposite. So you must teach the horse that when he's kicking right, you're not just react to, uh, going to react with the power or strength with the spurs or the whip or shouting or whatever. You will control his balance. He's kicking to the right side, which means the entire hind quarters and the thighs are moving right, which means the uh, shoulders and the neck is moving left. So you must let the horse know that you will completely move the neck right, which means the hind quarters will move left and the horse will have to kick left instead of kick, kicking right which means his balance was, let's say, lost, and 70% of the kick that he wanted to kick was gone. When you control the balance of the horse, 70% of the bad behavior he's planning to do, like rearing up, bucking, bolting, and so on, 70% of it will be gone because his balance is gone. What makes it happen even more is using strength. When you use strength, you're giving the horse the reason to keep doing what he's doing. But when you control his balance by controlling his direction, the horse will feel that his balance, uh, balance is lost. So to keep his balance, or let's say uh, retain his balance or regain his balance, he will have to stop doing what he's doing. When, he, when the balance is back, he will start to do it again. So look at his di- uh, neck direction. When he is kicking right, point and direct his neck right, he will have to kick left, which means he will stop kicking, then will try to kick left, then do the opposite. Or do the opposite if he's kicking in the left side. So it's all about controlling the direction. Now, if you want to do it in training before the competition, when you do uh, loops or uh, circles and canter in a normal course in the, in the paddock or in the stable, when you train the horse, it's just uh, one or two fences. So usually you canter a lot in circles, then you hit to the fence and jump. Not just like uh, the competition, you have a course. You cannot ride the horse in circles in a competition. You have time and you need to finish the course in the uh, fastest uh, time possible. But in a uh, arena while uh, training the horse you can canter the horse in circles so in the second he wants to buck and kick in the right side immediately canter him in a circle to the right side so he will have to kick left if he wanted to kick left and before kicking left he will stop kicking or bucking as soon as he tries to kick or buck to the left side with the left le- uh, legs or thighs circle him to the left so let the horse know that you will circle him to the uh, direction that he wants to kick at he wants to kick in the right side with the back side of his body so circle him in trot or canter to the right side and the opposite with time in the competition when the horse tries to kick with just a normal let's say a uh, turn right or left the horse will expect you to actually ask him to give you a full circle so he will stop kicking so even though you're not planning to circle him in a competition, but you did circle him in training before the competition, so he will expect you to circle him and will stop bucking or kicking. Just like dressage riding or even uh, western riding when they just change the direction a little bit and the horse will change the lead. Uh, in the competition, they just change the direction with the spurs or with the rein a little bit and he gives you what you want. But if you go back uh, to what they did in the training process, they actually ask the horse to give them a couple of circles, right or left. Then they suddenly change the direction. So uh, three or four circles to the left side. Then suddenly ask him to give you a circle to the right side and the horse will change the lead. With time, you don't have to ask him to give you a circle to make him change the lead. Just a couple of touches with the spurs and the uh, rein is more than enough to make him change his lead. The same goes for your case. Uh, I don't have to ask him to give me a couple of circles to stop kicking to the right side or the left side. With time, just change, changing the direction right or left a little bit, just slightly, will make the horse stop bucking or kicking because he's expecting me to ask, uh, ask him a full circle, left or uh, right. So he will choose to stop kicking. That's my opinion about what he's doing. Of course, if you want the real answer of my uh, opinion or my case, 
if you give the horse of course to someone who will restart the horse or you break the horse you will uh, retrain the horse or uh, let's say rebreak or restart the horse from a to z you will change the uh, entire training process if it's a western style or a dressage style or a french style in europe and so on the correct ways of riding but he's a show jumping horse which means you want to do a lot of things without changing the schedule of training him for competitions and show jumping you don't want to change your style as a show jumper so i'm giving you answers inside your rules or inside let's say your world or may, uh, uh, field of uh, riding but if it's a horse that will be ridden by a different style of riding maybe most of what i said makes no difference because i will restart the horse from a to z but what i told you might be uh, useful or helpful in your case as a show jumper uh, on a show jumping horse best of luck